people are always asking how much vibration is too much vibration and the answer is it's relative the more vibration your copter has and vibration comes mostly from the motors the more vibration the motors make then the more filtering you may need in order to get the copter to be able to be tuned well the lower your p and especially your d gains will need to be for example if you have more vibration and also uh, as you see in the release notes for beta flight 2.7 you may need to reduce your filtering as well. In other words, filter more, reduce your cutoff frequencies. And when you filter more, you increase the latency of the PID loop, which makes the PID loop less able to deal with rapidly changing scenarios like prop wash. Do you get all that? More vibration, bad. Less vibration, good. But there isn't really an absolute amount of vibration that you could say, no, no, that's clearly too much. You could have a copter with a lot of vibration. You could tune it a little looser and you could filter it a little heavier and it could still be perfectly flyable depending on your standards for what perfectly flyable is. Obviously, there's a certain point where there's too much vibration, but it's, it can, there's, a, there's a gray area. So what I recommend that you do is when you get new motors, put the motors on the copter before you fly them and crash them even one time, spin them up and measure the vibration and then keep that as a baseline. And if you keep doing that, you'll be able to sort of build up your own perspective on what you think an appropriate amount of vibration is. Now, I've just put these um, Rotor Geeks motors, these 2205, 2700 kV Rotor Geeks motors on. And since I've just put brand new motors on my copter, and since I've been talking about this lately, I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna show you what the results are. We're gonna learn together. So what I've done here is I've got a 4S battery, it is not fully charged and i've also got my automotive light bulb in here now the automotive light bulb here is mostly just to drop some voltage and slow the motors down and the battery's not fully charged i would really be better off doing this with a 3s but eh, i don't have one handy it's not so there you go you don't want to spin the motors with the props off at full rpm you can get a sometimes you can get sync issues and you can even burn an esc or damage a motor that way so we don't want to hit the rev limiter on the R, on the ESC, but we're going to be, I think with this light bulb dropping volts, and by the way, you may even hear the voltage beeper come on when I spin the motor up. With this light bulb dropping volts and with a not fully charged 3S or 4S battery, I think we'll be all right. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is you can see I've got the copter on a towel here. And the reason for that is that on a slippery desk surface, when the motor starts spinning, sometimes it can vibrate and you kind of want, kind of want to walk. So putting it on the towel will damp it just a little bit. If I, if I were to hold it with my hand, well, that would damp the vibrations, right? And wouldn't give me a consistent measurement. So by putting it on the towel, I can keep it from sort of walking around and damp the vibration a little bit, but still get a sort of a consistent measurement of what the vibration level is. So I'm gonna to connect to the flight controller. My props are off. I'm gonna to go to the motors tab. And by the way, you definitely do want to do this test with the props off, not just for safety, <laughs> which sometimes, as you know, I don't always do if I'm using my light bulb, but also because you want to measure the vibration of the motors themselves, not the vibration of the motor plus prop. What I'm going to do here first is I'm going to turn my accelerometer on. You can see my accelerometer is off. By default in beta flight, when you change the loop time to a faster loop time, it turns the accelerometer off. Okay, accelerometer is now on. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, look, my loop time is not consistent as consistent anymore. Well, there you go, that's why they turn it off. But anyway, for the test, now it's working. So I'm gonna reset. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the up arrow to slowly move through the throttle range. And the reason for that is that if you jerk, that can create sort of twitches in the motor that throws the number off. And I have said that for my RCX 2206 motors, I had a guideline of 0.01 to 0.03 uh, on the scale. I guess this is probably Gs. 0.01 to 0.03 Gs. And some people said, really? Really? That's it. Really? That's awfully low. But here you go. Brand new motor, fresh out of the box, never flown. 0.01 or less Gs. Bingo. So, um, yeah, basically nothing. Now, there is a question of whether the accelerometer filtering plays into that. We can look 
and we're going to look for ACC LPF Hertz is at 10. Now it's possible if you change this number to a different number, you would get to a higher number, you would get more vibrations coming through. I'm not really interested in that. All I really care about is I guarantee you that if this motor starts getting dinged up, we will see bigger numbers than that. So you can change the ACC LPF Hertz to a higher number if you care to and see if the, oh, dag nabbit, I can't resist some science. Let's see if it's different. Now, when I did this with my RCX motors, it didn't seem to make a difference, but they were really beat up. They were pulling between one and three Gs. So maybe they just had so much noise that it didn't really matter where it was being filtered. It was all getting through. Let's see if it gets any different on these Uber clean motors. We'll do that same motor again. It, it did make a difference. More vibration got through. So there you go. Now we know that uh, under some conditions it does make a difference. But I stand by my conclusion. Whatever you set that value at, whatever you set, decide you want to set this to, make sure you run your tests with it set to the same value every time. And I think that's what matters the most. You might get 0.01 Gs with it set to 10. And you might get 0.03 Gs with it set to 50. But the thing is, I guarantee you after you start banging these motors up, you'll start seeing numbers like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, right? 0.15. They will jump up by even or as much as an order of magnitude. And so wherever the filter is, I think you're going to see the increase as the motors get more banged up. And, and, and so I, for me personally, I would just leave this at the default and not mess with changing it every time I run this test. But you could certainly change it. That's up to you. All right, well, that's it for this quick little test. Uh, brand new motor, top of the line motor, out of the box, throughout the whole throttle range, less than 0.01 or maybe as much as 0.02 to 0.04, depending on where ACC LPF Hertz was set to. And that's your baseline. I saw the same thing with the RCX 2206 motors, which are also motion balanced. However, you may have a motor like a Cobra motor, which is not known for being very well balanced, that has a higher vibration level. That doesn't mean it's a bad motor and you should throw it out. Cobra motors are great motors. Lots of winning pilots run Cobra motors and they just tune around it. If a motor has higher vibration, it's not necessarily terrible. Uh, it can be flyable. You just have to tune a little bit differently around it. However, there is definitely a certain point where you will start to run up against the limits. For me, the previous motors I had on this copter had G ranges between one and three Gs when I spun the motor up with the props off. That's pretty bad with the props on. With the props off, it's terrible. And I ended up having to put some vibration damping on my flight control board and back off my D-gain a little bit, and the copter was still 100% flyable. But at the end of the day, now that I have these nice clean motors on, it's going to be able to tune it sharper for sure. That's all for now. Hope it's helpful. Happy flying.